people are important. Now, let me ask this question. What is the difference, if any, between importance and self-importance? Hmm. Can anybody tell me what the difference might be? It's not if there to, is any. It's not <laughs> good to trust ourselves. Right, you like, she uh, has she would like to take a stab at it. Okay, I think importance would be more serving others and, and being selfless as opposed to the opposite of what you just said. The Putting others first. The, oh, so importance is what someone else has. Is that what I got you? Yeah. And we being self-important, that's the importance that we think we have. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was saying hello to all you guys. There's this young lady coming over here. To visit is this her. who I think it is? Yeah. It is. Very it good. Is welcome, <laughs> welcome. I brought you some chairs. Nah, I'm not you can sit down. <laughs> now, <clears throat> the first... Okay. Okay. Now, anyone has their Bible? If they don't, no problem, because yes, okay. I'm going to read it. Okay. And here we go. We're going to read from 2 Kings. It's over in the Old Testament. 2 Kings 18. Down at the beginning. Okay. Right at the beginning. And I'm only going to read just a few verses here. Okay. And we're going to get introduced to David a little bit. Now, David, you remember, King David... Slayer of Goliath, ruler of Israel, right? Husband of Bathsheba after he killed Uriah the Hittite. Had him killed. Okay, so in 18 it goes, Now it came to pass in the third year of Hosea, son of Elah, king of Israel, okay? Hez, Echiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Okay. Now, 25 years old was he when he reigned? And let's see. Yeah. He did that what which was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that David his father did. He removed the high images, the high places, cut down the groves, broke the pieces, the brazen serpent, um, let's see, and so forth. And the children of Israel no longer would be able to burn incense to that. And then the key verse in verse number five, he trusted in the Lord God of Israel so that after him, was not like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. Amen. What he is telling us here, what now remember, who is the inspiration for all the words in here? God Jesus. Almighty Jesus. The creator of the universe prompted all saints of old to write exactly what we have yes, here. The Holy Spirit. No missing words, no nothing. He prompted all holy men of old mm -hmm. to write all of this. These are holy words. Holy words means respect them. Amen. Believe Amen. them. That's what it means. Trust them. No. Trust. That's I trust. cannot make you do that. What you are going to have the uh, assignment to do is to just read a page. One page. Mm -hmm. Begin at the beginning, read a page. And satisfy yourself that this is not man writing this. This is, this is beyond man. You know, just consider the first few words coming out of the out of Genesis one. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Amen. All you have to do is read that one little passage, and if you're not knocked out, I don't know what will do it. 
This is an amazing statement. It is. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Amen. Okay, now, we can believe that or we can disbelieve it. That's right. Now, we have a responsibility either way. If we believe it, we have to prove it to ourselves, justify it for ourselves that it's true. We have to do that. That's a part of our responsibility as human beings, and I think we all know this. Second, if we disbelieve it, we must prove it that it's not that way. We have a responsibility to do that. So, if someone comes to you and says, well, I don't believe God did this. This is evolution. Your question to them would be what? Prove it. Yeah, huh? Test them. What test did it. you say? Prove it. What did you Prove say? it if you don't. Test them. Test them. Prove evolution. Let me tell you, as a scientist, I've been on both sides of the fence. You taught biology. All right? <coughs> I've taught lots and lots of kids and adults biology. I worked as a biologist. Amen. Now, I can tell you unequivocally that the person who believes in evolution cannot prove to you that God does not exist any more than he'll turn the table on you and he'll say, you prove you God prove. does. Right. Yes, yeah. Okay? Our objective is not to prove either way because remember we start off with trust in the Lord and you said something about belief faith all right belief whether we are Christian and remember there are four very specific requirements and that you will know you are Christian by these four requirements. Remember, we've been talking about this for a, a couple of months. Can you tell I'm me? I'm going to tell you in a second. <laughs> not only, not only, um, those who our Christians will say, well, I believe it. By the same token, and that is a fancy way of saying just like that, the evolutionists will have to tell you that they believe something else. Yeah. Now, they're going to point to a lot of documents in their fancy libraries. <laughs> and I've studied a lot of them. Not any of those documents can rationalize evolution when it comes down to very specific study and research. It always falls apart. Every single time it falls apart. So, our belief, the Christian belief, is a fourfold belief. One, we believe voluntarily. Nobody makes us believe. We choose. Now, I want to give you one little insight into evolution and the way that the, the scientists uh, use evolution. They use it among themselves to force one another to believe it. It may not be said, but often there will be money 
involved. There will be money. If you don't believe this, we're taking money away from your research program. <laughs> like grants. Okay? Yes. Yeah. So so I want, just, just want to yep. make sure the money, honey. that I'm, I'm making a point I mean, here. No, I know you guys know, but okay. I'm just saying. I, yeah. I know. Yeah. I ain't no. got a penny, but once we believe in God, we, we got a name. Yeah, yeah, we do. But that's down it's the true. road. Yeah, I know. Yeah. No. More included. You're, You're right. right. What, what, I'm, uh, what I'm telling you is that Christians, it's a voluntary. We voluntarily. Now, if we are going to voluntarily move from here to the next place that we go after this session is over? Or is anybody making us do that? No. Mm -hmm. Or are we doing it on our own? We choose. This is a similar idea. Christianity must be voluntary. If you or anyone feel like Ooh, I'm getting a lot of pressure to believe it. In your case, because you're in a different part of your life, you might feel like you have a lot of pressure on you because you don't want to do the wrong thing and end up in a hot place. <laughs> that's, that's not voluntary. Voluntary is you're thinking like this. You're going, hey, 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 hey. Hey, oh, you're going to make me do this? No. No, no, no. But the Word of God says all over in it that we, it's our, by our wills. 